press freedom is an important human right enshrined in our constitution, in our constitutional dispensation, which must be protected and promoted. There is no question that the media as an institution deserves and should be afforded the space to flourish as a critical platform for, for freedom of expression. The ANC has always fought for media freedom, which it believes is a cornerstone for any democracy to flourish. All of us have a responsibility to defend media freedom and editorial independence from any form of compulsion, be it political, economic, or commercial. However, independence from such pressure, pressures does not presume that journalists are unique human beings with unique journalistic genes and genealogy. They are impacted upon by the environment within which they operate, by the circumstances that spawn them, rights, rights go hand in hand with the responsibility, hence the need for a balanced, independent mechanism to adjudicate complaints between the media and the broader society. The paper acknowledges that positing media freedom only in constitutional and legal terms is inadequate. We need to examine other and perhaps more fundamental expressions of media freedom. One of these is the issue of ownership and control. There can be no full realization of media freedom in a situation of growing conglomeration of ownership and homogenization of content. One consequence of such conglomeration is that newsrooms are being cut down, research capacity is being disseminated, and lifting from the wires as distant from real investigative work is becoming the norm. There can be no real media freedom without diversity in ownership of the media. If commercial imperatives start to impact directly and on a day-to-day -day basis on content, where the bottom line dictates content in this pervasive manner and editors are held on a leash, the consequence is that advertisers and marketers determine news and analysis, and stories are sometimes spiked, spiked at their behest. Especially for the poor, media freedom should be understood to include their participation not merely as consumers, but also as producers of news and analysis. Pluralistic and diverse media should be promoted throughout through the enactment of laws and interventions guided by principles of free and independent media. Such interventions through policy and legislation with objectives to creating an enabling environment which support media development and diversity can enable free, independent, and pluralistic media. Media diversity supports, promotes, deepens, consolidates, and strengthens democracy, nation building, social cohesion, and good governance. Currently, the flow of information remains mainly firm in the hand of, hands of the ruling class, and for the success <coughs> of the revolution, this has to, page to, has to be changed drastically. The necessary changes in media could afford citizens the possibility to influence and deepen democracy, democratic ethos at community level, more so using community media. Media freedom should be enjoyed by all citizens wherever they are, rural, urban, rich, poor, and all genders. Access to media and information should be enjoyed by all citizens. All citizens should have the opportunity to not only consume media, but produce and own media. I know this has been long,